right, how are you good to go? Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's meeting. I would like to call the meeting to order. It is now 9.04 a.m. Uh, Stephanie, can you please take attendance? Good morning, everyone. Uh, Adrian Cochran will not be joining us. Andrea Comer has not joined us yet. Ellen McKitterick. Present. John Scott is not joining us. And Mike Soltis. Here. And Holly Williams. Present. All right, we do not have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to welcome and thank members of the public for joining us this morning. And because we don't have a quorum, we will move past agenda item number two, which is the, remo the review and approval of the May 26 meeting minutes and proceed to item number three, um, which is a budget review of spending to date. So Dave, would you uh, please walk us through um, the financials? Yes, of course. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Let me bring the financials on screen. You can see your screen, Dave. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's get started. All right, so we're going to go over the financial results for the month of May uh, and year to date, of course. So for May, the spending was $1.3 million. Um, that was actually almost $131,000 more than what we budgeted for the month. I know I don't say that too often, um, but having said that, year to date, um, we're still $5.5 million ahead of budget. Uh, what happened in uh, May for the higher than usual spending was, uh, well, number one, we had, um, in April, we had a freeze for about a week or so because we were converting over from QuickBooks desktop to QuickBooks online and to bill.com direct from uh, the uh, Bank of America build out offering they had. Uh, so there was about a week or so of spending we did in May that we normally would have done in April. That was number one. Number two, we paid uh, some, we paid the Department of Labor for their appeals work that they do on our behalf. And that was $377,000 for three quarters. Uh, so that increased the spending more than usual for the month. Uh, year to date, we're still, uh, better than budget for that line. So no issues there. The other spending items for the month of May were salaries and the related expenses for $559,000, outreach for $182,000, contact center for $128,000. And we had an annual expense of $50,000 uh, to DAS, the Department of Administrative Services, uh, for the HR and IT administrative work that they perform on our behalf. Moving on to the bond account, the bond spending was $190,000 for the month, about $34,000 better than budget. Uh, that spending for the month was predominantly on the fund recovery system and some uh, other work on some other items. We also did have a $35,000 item uh, for work on uh, a one-time item for the uh, Department of Labor appeal system that we had agreed to pay for uh, because it was work related to, um, um, I lost my train of thought. It was work that dealt with uh, the paid leave aspect of the system. Uh, year to date, the spending has been $1.7 million. We're still $3.7 million ahead of budget through May. And we expect that trend to continue uh, through the end of the year, the end of the fiscal year, uh, which is in about another week or so already. Moving on, oh, actually, uh, 
regarding the bond money, we've spent $12.9 million so far of the $16 million allocated. So we have almost $3.1 million left remaining of bond funds that are available to the authority. Moving on to the uh, contribution account, the activity for the month was almost a negative $23.6 million. That's $14.2 million ahead of budget. The main driver of that continues to be benefits paid, which was $12.8 million ahead of budget. The actual spending of benefits paid for the month of May was over $24.5 million. That averages out to about $6.1 million a week. Uh, that's gone, that's a little higher than it's been in prior months. In prior months, it's been about six. So we are seeing a, a slight increase in benefits being paid to recipients. Uh, contribution activity for the month was $586,000. That was over a million dollars less than what we had budgeted, uh, but that was more than offset by the investment income that we earned of almost $2.3 million. And uh, that was because of the higher interest rate than what we budgeted. We're earning about 5.1% right now in the short-term investment fund account. Uh, so we're pleased with those results so far. Year to date in the contribution account, uh, we have had almost $148 million of activity. That's 164, over $164 million better than budget. And the main drivers that drivers of that continue to be uh, better than budgeted benefits paid, uh, investment income. And also uh, we did not transfer $5 million for the last fiscal quarter of the year uh, because we didn't, because we had enough money in the operating reserves. So we didn't need to transfer the money. And we continue, and we don't expect to transfer that in the next week uh, through the end of the fiscal year. The contribution fund itself is at 530, over $531 million for the year. Uh, inception to date. The contribution funds that have come in so far have been $954.6 million since January of 2021. And the benefits paid out have been over $369 million since January of 2022. Quick look at the balance sheet. Our assets are over $552 million. Our uh, largest asset continues to be the short-term investment fund, and that's over $518 million. Still have $12 million in the impressed account. And uh, just as a reminder, we are earning um, investment income on that. Uh, that just went up, actually. It was 3.5%. We're now earning 3.9%. Uh, Regarding where we believe we'll be at the end of the fiscal year, uh, the net activity for the year, we think will be $2.9 million. Uh, that's compared to the budget of all, a little over $2.9 million. So that's about break even. Uh, keep in mind that uh, anticipates that uh, we will not be transferring $5 million uh, as revenue of the administrative fee. So what that means is we're basically breaking even uh, spending $5 million less than we thought we were, which is why the expenses for the year are expected to be about $12.1 million versus a budget of over $17 million. And the main drivers of that uh, are as usual, salaries and related expenses are uh, less than what we budgeted because positions started later or, or, or haven't been filled when we expected them to be filled. And also uh, the outside IT, outside IT consulting expenses wasn't as much as we were expecting to pay because we handled much of that work internally. So we didn't need outside consultants for that. And Contribution activity through the end of the fiscal year, we expect that to be around $116.7 million, better than budget by over $171 million. 
Again, the variances are what I outlined previously, benefits paid and uh, investment income is also better than budget and the $5 million we didn't transfer. So that's what's happening for the month of May. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question, Dave. Yes, Mike. So I think the minimum wage went up uh, to $15 on June 1st. That is correct, sir. All right. So that's going to, um, I'm curious what you think the net impact of that is going to be since our contributions should go up, but the amount of the claims, the, the claims paid uh, should, should go up as well. So what that's do you think correct. the net? the net effect of that is going to be? I don't think the net effect of that is uh, going to be much. It's certainly not going to be a negative effect on the fund. Uh, you're correct in that uh, contributions will probably go up somewhat. Uh, we won't see that until the next quarter. But as you point out, uh, the formula for benefits is also based on that. Uh, so correspondingly, the benefits we pay out will go up as well. Um, we do keep track of the benefits going out, making sure uh, uh, because that affects the cap of the benefits being paid out. Uh, but we, we do keep track to make sure that the benefits being paid out are for the appropriate time period. Uh, so no one will get paid more because the minimum wage went up if it was approved before that time period. All right, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Anyone else? I don't see any. All right, so um, we do have a quorum now. So, and thank you, Dave, for walking us through the financials this morning. Um, we're going to go back to item number two on our agenda. And um, I would like to ask the committee for a review of the May 26, 2023 minutes and a call to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, so the motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, and we'll jump then down to item number four. Is there any old business anybody would like to discuss? No, any new business? No, all right. So I um, would like to ask for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thank you, and a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, the motion carries and the meeting is adjourned at 917. Thank you everybody for joining us this morning for the brisk walkthrough of the financials. I hope everybody has a lovely weekend. You too. Thank, Thank you. Thank you everybody. Bye everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.